What's up Falcon fans? This is the recap video where we discuss what happened to the Atlanta Falcons. If you guys like this type of content, hit that like button. If you guys hate this type of content, hit that dislike button. It won't hurt your boy's feelings. Well, maybe it's a little bit. But if you want to do a huge favor for your boy by hitting that subscribe button, it will help other empire grow. So on that note, let's dive into the video and talk about the good, the bad, and the Falcons. Let's start out with the good. Let's start with the offense side of the ball. Now, I said previously in a couple of videos that the Atlanta Falcons usually average over 120 plus rushing yards. So, in total today, we had 30 carries and 177 total rushing yards. You know, B. John Robinson, Tyler Algier found some really good gaping holes. Um, fantastic job. You know, CP is trying to do his thing. And then, you know, Heineke... Um, for some reason, he looked really good. Now, is that because the play calling was a lot better? Or was it him at the helm really commanding the field? Um, you know, 33 attempts, 22 completions, 229 um, passing yards, one touchdowns, and no interceptions. Only took one sack. Um, pretty good job, you know, finding the holes. You know, B. John Robinson, you know, there was a lot of good um, play calling um, scriptions for him to get the receiving in. You know, he was targeted 10 times, got seven receptions for a grand total of 50 yards. You know, Kyle Pitts, this is what we've been looking for, to get him creative plays where he can get wide open down the field for incredible long touchdowns because we see in college, uh, we saw that, you know, his rookie year, you know, when Matt Ryan was at the helm. And, you know, it's great that we're finally getting to utilizing him a lot more now. Obviously, we have to take into consideration because of that um, leg injury he dealt with last year against the ba the Bears. Oh, God. <laughs> um, but e everybody else was doing a great job. Um, I can't really complain about that. And then, of course, the defense. The defense is really why we won this game. I mean, Caden Ellis, Nate Landman, two incredible linebackers did their things to making sure that, you know, the wide receivers did not get wide open down the middle as much as possible. Now, also, we have to take in consideration that Michael Pittman Jr. was their main focus point, and I said it in my preview video, that he's the guy that moves the chains for the Indianapolis Colts. And it showed you, without him, um, this defense had a lot of better time to get after the quarterback, make incredible stops. You know, Jesse Bates, you know, who has been a stud ever since we signed him out of, I mean, back when he didn't uh, go back with the Cincinnati Bengals, so great pickup for that. You know, Calais Campbell, a half and a sack. You know, my God, this guy is 37 years old and he's still kicking it. And then Zach um, Harrison, uh, two sacks. I mean, good job for him. Maybe, you know, he's going to be a 10 sack leader, you know, sooner than later, maybe next year or the year before that. You know, uh, Arnold Epicady, you know, good job on him with the quarterback hits. He had three or maybe he had uh, four. I can't quite remember, but, you know, he was getting after the quarterback. So great job on that. And, you know, all around, they definitely improved. It's just something like you, you wonder why this – it can't be consistent enough, but I ain't gonna complain about that. And then, cause you know, young with Koo, I said that you know, Koo did a, a fantastic job, five for five, a hundred percent accuracy. You know, his longest was a forty-seven field goal attempt, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, sometimes you can have a bad day. Doesn't mean you're bad. It just means he just had a one-off day. And I knew he wasn't that bad enough to have consistently missing field goals after every single game. So great job on that, building his confidence right off the chain. And I can't be more happier than that. Um, there's uh, there's other things I'm really impressed with, and I think I said this touch on pawn a little bit. But why was the play calling? was so much better than previous games. Now, maybe it had to do with Desmond Ritter maybe not executing it right. Uh, maybe Arthur Smith just wasn't, you know, executing right as well for him. Of course, you have to think about these different opponents. And football is such a complicated sport. You really don't know who you're going to match up or who you're going to be for these games or not. And the reason why I say this is because the Colts are a really good team. They can score on every given Sunday. They did it against the Houston Texans, the Cleveland Browns, the New Orleans Saints, the Carolina Panthers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, the Tennessee Titans, um, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so you know they're capable of doing that. So we just caught them slipping. And that's just something I had them uh, us losing because I said um, previously uh, we're going to lose this game 27-17 to because I know how much of a firepower house they can become. But you know what? That's what I love about football. And I'm glad I'm proven wrong because this defense really is something magical. And it's just unfortunately we've just been on a roller coaster ride so far. But hey, this is a good sign, I, I think. So when it comes to the bad, 
for once, there's not a lot of things to harp on or pinpoint a lot of negativities uh, so far on this video when it comes to the bad. Um, there's only two major concerns I've kind of noticed that hopefully for next year's season, they won't be a huge problem and then we can finally have a winnable, competable season where we can win this division and hopefully go to the promised land to taste the milk and honey. Uh, number one is... Take full advantage of your opponent's disadvantage. So what do I mean by that? I said in my preview video that the Indianapolis Colts ranked second to dead last in giving up the most rushing touchdowns. We only got one, and when we were in the red zone, we didn't really capitalize on creative ways to push through through the goal line because that's what Arthur Smith's been bragging all season is improving in the red zone efficiency when it comes to scoring touchdowns. And it just hasn't been like that, unfortunately, for the Atlanta Falcons. Number two, missing the opportunities and scoring touchdowns. So I love Young Way Koo. We all do. And we appreciate what he has done. You know, 33 attempts and complete 30 of those. So if you turn those or half that, you know, we could have scored more uh, touchdowns in the passing game and the rushing game if we just found the end zone perfectly. Now, there were a couple of times where it's just we got out of bounds or just didn't have proper uh, footing, you know, with Matt Hollins uh, in, in uh, the Green Bay Packers game where that should have been a touchdown, me personally. And then, you know, the B. John Robinson, you know, throw that should have been a touchdown, but, you know, it is what it is, but if you if you really think about it, because I think right now, if I'm getting the top of my head, the Falcons in total when it comes to passing touchdowns is 14, and then when it comes to the rushing touchdowns is like 10, I think. But if you really think about it, we could have more rushing touchdowns, more passing touchdowns than, than just this, but we have to be creative, or really Arthur Smith, because his job's on the line, is probably over at that point, but... There, this line of Falcons to offense is not that bad if you really calculate all the missed opportunities we had. This could have been a solid season for us, but unfortunately, just things haven't gone our way, unfortunately. So that's all I just kind of noticed. It just kind of showed it at this point against the Colts. Like, yeah, there was a lot of things we just couldn't capitalize, especially on the Minnesota game. You know, uh, we missed four opportunities, score, you know, uh, seven points and then the Tennessee failed three times to score uh, seven points and then you know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the first time you know and then the second time three and and, and then the Green Bay Packers we could have scored four uh, uh, seven uh, uh, touchdowns so this offense could have been really dangerous when it comes to points but unfortunately that's just not the case but a lot of people might not realize or forget about that or because you see on the stat sheet on how low score we are, you think we're a bad offense. No, we just have a lot of missed opportunities, and that's what's killing us and losing us these critical games. Because honestly, we could, you logistically, and have a good argument, we could only really lose two games, I guarantee you. And that would probably have been uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars games and the Detroit Lions games. But every other game, we would have won all those games. So who knows what the possibility for next year if we just get a little bit more help and capitalize on our inconsistencies. That's the scary thought, Atlanta Falcon fans. Whoo, crazy time. So now let's talk about the Falcons. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I had no faith in this team in beating the Indianapolis Colts after they just had a smackdown against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, do you see what the Steelers did, you know, to the Cincinnati Bengals? Wow, they wally mopped them. But, like, can you guys blame me? I mean, we debacled against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where we had it in the bag, and then the final drive, they just won it out. It was just killer. And then the Carolina Panthers game where I have no idea why we couldn't score more than just seven points on the board it was just it was the worst thing I've ever seen besides that Detroit Lion game and that was like what week three and so that was just nasty and, and you know come on like like oh my god that was so bad you know everything was so bad in that game but you know what that's what I keep saying you just never know you could do all the statistics you could do all the analytics you can say all the right things but then after the day um it could completely bite you in the ass and it's just like wow that's why I I keep saying I love football so much. It's the greatest sport because you just never know what's going to be the outcome. So on that note, if you guys lasted this long to the very end of the video, thank you so much for taking your own personal time and day to watch the Falcon content videos. Here's more on the screen if you guys are interested in. So what do Falcons do? Rise up. Until the next episode, show love and peace to the world and peace. And you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays.